Amen. How's everybody doing today? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask those who are able to stand up with me at this time. How many came ready to worship the Lord this morning? I got one person who's ready. Pastor Olga's ready. Is it, who's ready to worship the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. It is a good day to worship the Lord. Amen. How many know that any day is good to worship the Lord? Psalm 100 says, shout for joy, all the earth. Shout, to the, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Amen. Let's shout to joy, for joy to the Lord today. Amen. Let's worship the Lord in all of his goodness. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. Isn't that good news today? We are his. Amen. Tell your neighbor, we are his. Amen. That's good news today. Amen. Come before him with joyful songs. Know the Lord is good. We are his people, the sheep of his pastor. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. Amen. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. Amen. It is good to worship the Lord. I want to just thank God for all, every person that is here present today. I want to thank all of those of you who are joining us streaming. God bless you. Welcome to Fordham Manor Church Sunday Sermon. Let's give the Lord a praise offering today. Let's give him thanks today. He is good and we are the people of his pastures. Pastor Vinny, if you could just throw my mic up a little bit, amen. Let's pray right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you, Lord, that this is the day that you have made, and you have called us to enter into your courts with thanksgiving and praise. So today we give you thanks for waking us up. We thank you this is an opportunity that we have to glorify your holy name. Lord, we give you our voices. We give you our hearts. We give you our minds as we listen to the word. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have a word for us today. And we're receptivity today. We're ready to receive everything that you have for us. And we will praise you with everything that we have in the name of Jesus and all of God's people. Say it together. Amen and amen. Church. Ah, oh, you don't sound excited to be here. One more time. Good morning, church. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? If you guys know the song, sing along. The Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in heaven. That be a prayer. And Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. One more time. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. And Father, let your kingdom Kingdom come, Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Come on, give us a sign. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us as we forgive the ones who sinned against us. Father, let 
today. Can we come in agreement and say amen? amen? Let your kingdom come, Lord. And how that happens is when we are kingdom minded. here today has ever thought that they weren't good enough to be used by the God Almighty. You know, we can relate. We've all been in that place where we feel less than it. We feel that there is nothing that we can ever do to, to just earn, uh, to please God or, or to just have favor in his eyes. But I want you to know today that we serve a God who has come to redeem us, who has come to save us, who has come to heal us, who came and died for us, who loved us so much that he decided to walk among us, who loved us so much that when he decided to leave, he said, I'm going to leave you something. I'm going to leave you a companion so that you may be able to walk with me to the end of your days. Because it says in the word that he will be with you while you're old and gray. That's the God that we serve. There's no mistake that you're here today. There's no mistake that you've made it this far because we serve a God who has a plan to prosper you, a plan for you to be successful in the kingdom in his eyes and his will. I shouldn't be alive my future was six feet under, one foot in the grave, no hope to be saved. Oh, I shouldn't be alive, but I'm a miracle child. Defied every diagnosis, and as close as I can, I can stand here and say, I'm a miracle child. Oh, death, where is your sting? My Savior's word is final. I am resurrected, blood protected. I'm, I'm a miracle
need some more heart. Come on. You're the living, breathing God of glory. I'm the living, breathing testimony. You're the my dead in story to a living, breathing testimony. You're the living, breathing. You're the living, breathing testimony. You're the one who hurts my dead in story. Testimony. Where is your sin? My Savior's word is mine. No, oh, I am resurrected, protected. I oh, yes, where is your sin? My Savior's word is mine. No, oh, I am resurrected, blood protected. If you're not excited about that, if you're not, your heart is not jumping for joy, you got to let God in because he wants you to know that you've been redeemed, you've been chosen, you've been sealed by his Holy Spirit, and you are his. You've been resurrected, born again, a new creation in Christ. And he wants you to know that because, you know, this is kind of like my second part of my sermon from last week. We forget who we are in Christ and what he's done for us. We have the power of the living God in us. The most high God. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. My Jesus. Oh, Jesus. My Jesus. Oh, Jesus. My Jesus. I. My Jesus, my Jesus, my Jesus, come on, my Jesus, my Jesus, 
my Jesus, I am a miracle child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You thought you were in a miracle. But can you turn to someone and say, I am a miracle child. Amen. I'm a miracle child. Hallelujah. I am a miracle child. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah. They brought the fire in the house here today. Amen. The Holy Spirit fire. You can be seated. Amen. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Hallelujah. Well, and he's like, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Online, welcome. Thank you for joining us. So glad to see all of you in the house of the Lord. Some new faces, too. I'm so excited. And some of you that joined us for Easter, you're back again. I'm doubly excited to have you in the house of the Lord. And those of you online, I see new people online also. Uh, what a blessing. We're a blessed church. How many of you know we're a blessed church? Amen. If you were the only one here, we're a blessed church. Amen. Amen. You're all so important to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. With that said, I want to welcome our new um, guests that are here. If we, just raise your hands. We're not going to have you say anything. We just want to acknowledge that you're visiting us today. Amen. <clears throat> I met Nicole today. We have two sisters over here. They're not raising their hand, but here you go. Right? They're right there. They're joining us today for the first time. Amen. Anybody else? Just raise your hands. We just want to give you a gift bag. Just acknowledge that you were here today. We have what's called a connect card in there. If you don't mind filling it out and dropping it off with the ushers, you can also give it to me. And um, if you have a prayer request, please put it there. Even for those of you that are here and you have a prayer request, write it down in the connect card so that we, the pastors, can pray for it. Amen. With that said, can you turn to someone and say, so glad you're here online. We're so glad that you're joining us, whether now or later. Thank you for stopping by. I mean, you could get up, you know, don't be scared. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? Good? Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask the, uh, the members of the consistory that are present to join me up front. The members of the consistory that are present, if you join me up front. We, uh, today, we get the privilege of welcoming in uh, new members today, so we're excited for that. Amen. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to ask... Um, Ruth and Leroy to come on up. We're receiving them as, as members. Amen. Uh, Carmen has a certificate for you. And then once you receive the certificate, if you can just remain up front as well. And then also Rita. We want to welcome Rita as well. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Would you stand in front of us? We want to pray for, pray for them. And... Uh, for those of you who are interested, we want you to become members of this church body as well. We're having lunch with the pastors today, and then also we are we'll be having a new member class very soon. So we'd love for you to be part of the church community at Fordham Manor. Would you stretch forth your hands as we pray for them and we welcome them into the family of God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for Leroy. We thank you, Lord, for Ruth. We thank you, Lord, for Rita, Lord. We thank you that you have brought them to this church for such a time as this, Lord. We thank you for them as individuals. We thank you for their love for you. We thank you for the way that you have uniquely gifted them to be part of the church body, Lord God, to minister in the church body. So we give you thanks, oh God, that you have brought them and their family to this house, Lord, for such a time as this. And Father, we ask, Lord, that we would be a blessing to them, and we know that they're going to be a blessing to us. They already have. So we thank you for them. We bless them today. We welcome them today as new members. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all of God's people say it together, amen, amen and amen. Welcome. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And consistory members, don't go yet. 
Don't go yet. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have a, um, a, a, a group that we're going to be sending out to the Dominican Republic, uh, and they're going to be leaving this Saturday. So I'm, I'm going to ask Sarah if you just invite your team to come up front because we want to pray for your team uh, as they go. And Sarah, you want to share a little bit about what you guys are going to be doing? Team, don't hide. You guys come up front. No, it's not the time to hide. Hello, guys. Can you just bring her up for a second? Okay. Yeah. Oh, where's Lissandra? Where's Lissandra? John, Lissandra. Who am I? Lissandra went home. She went home. Okay, sorry. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for your prayers and contributions. This is such a miracle thing. It's been in the making for about a year. We decided the, this trip last year around this time. And just seeing the Lord being so faithful and bringing each and every person together and the individual calling that he has upon this team is his heart for this team is really to be on the receiving end so he can transform and help us grow in our identity. Our prayer is that we don't come back the same, you know, transformed and sold for Christ. We will be um, interacting with children We'll be going to a juvenile detention center, youth orphanage center, uh, hospital or house visitation, given the um, scheduling there. Please keep us in your prayers. Please each, uh, keep each and every one of us in your prayers. Um, it's been fighting. The fight is good. It's a good fight. You know, it's a good fight, and the victory is already there. We're walking in victory. Um, we'll come back with great testimonies and changed and transformed hearts and stretched out personalities, you know. Um, mission is just really God and trusting us with his word and his people it's nothing to be taken lightly it's we're not going on a spiritual fling we're going to see where the Lord is entrusting us to further go out okay yeah amen praise the Lord I'm gonna ask uh, Pastor Olga if she would pray for this group as we go stretch forth your hands as we le we send them out oh, Jesus. hallelujah Lord Oh, be glorified with these individuals who have said yes. And you kept calling them, and some of them were like, no, 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 no. But they eventually aligned with your will for them for such a time as this. You are sending them out in the boldness and the power that you have given them as children of the Most High God. When they're confronted with whatever obstacles the enemy turn throws their way. Let them remember who they are in you, Lord God, that you have given them the mighty power to step on scorpions, Lord God, to heal the sick, Lord God, for miracles to take place, Lord God. Let them see your mighty hand in everything that they're about to do as they talk to someone, meet someone, go to their home, teach, Lord God, whatever you are calling them. You are anointing them now. Let your Holy Spirit power begin to flow, Lord God, flow and begin to break the hard ground that they may face, Lord God. The hard hearts that they may be facing, Lord God. You are doing it even now, Lord God. You are breaking ground, spiritual ground, Lord God. So that lives will be transformed and you will be glorified, Lord God. So, Lord, wrap them around in your arms and in your shield, Lord God. Let nothing come against them in the power and the name of Jesus, Lord God. We ask this in the name of our matchless Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This Wednesday, somebody say this Wednesday. Tell your neighbor this Wednesday. We are having a special house of prayer night, 6.30 p.m. We're going to be praying for those that we're going to be sending, but I'm calling the church to come out to pray and intercede. We're asking the Lord for do powerful things through this group. And how many know that it can only be done through prayer? All right. So who's going to join me this Wednesday? I'm going to ask again. Who's going to join me this Wednesday? I'm going to ask you again one more time. Who's going to join me this Wednesday? 
boldly come out and join us for prayer because we need the body of Christ to come together for such a time as this, 6.30 p.m. this Wednesday, praying for our missionaries, praying for the church body, praying for revival here in the church body. Moses has some other announcements that he wants to share with us. Amen. Good morning, Fordham Manor. Here is a couple of announcements, reminders. Join our family. Come join the family. Everyone is welcome. This year's theme, Fordham Manor, my house shall be called a house of prayer. I'm going to change that a bit if I'm allowed to. We're not called to pray. It is a mandate. When you are mandated to do something, you better do it. It's like the little boy that was listening to his dad coming home from a prayer meeting. He says, man, that prayer meeting was packed. There must have been over 100 people. And the little boy looked at him and said, dad, you should have been praying instead of counting. <laughs> How many know that the spring is here calendar-wise. I'm calling it Sprinter, but it's okay. But it's getting warmer. As the weather gets warmer, we will like to start our outside cafe. Sundays after the service, we are asking those with the gift of hospitality to help us to set up and serve. If you are interested, Please sign up in the back. There ain't nothing much sweeter than getting a cup of coffee and somebody saying, God bless you. <laughs> Three-day young adult retreat. If you're between the ages of 18 to 29, I barely remember when I was 29, but that's okay. Please join us or join them, not us. I'm not allowed. <laughs> Friday, May 31st to June 2nd on Sunday at the Shiloh Retreat Center in New Jersey. It will be a time of fellowship and building new relationships as we dive deeper, or they dive deeper, into God's Word. The cost for the retreat is $250. To reserve your spot, please deposit a $50 deposit, and that will hold your spot. Believer's baptism class. If you're interested in getting baptized, there is a four-week class you're required to take before you can be baptized. Classes will begin Sunday, April 28th at 9.30 here at the Florida Manor Church. You can register online using the QR code in your bulletin or sign up immediately in the back. Why do we have to get baptized? Another mandate. Jesus did it. Why not us? As the pastor said earlier, lunch with the pastors today, immediately after the service, if you are new to Fordham Manor. Lunch with the pastor gives you an opportunity to meet with pastors and other leaders in formal setting. Find out what we're all about. Get deeper with them. Get to know them. I myself have breakfast with the pastor. It's 7 in the morning. I know he makes me get up earlier, but it's okay. We get deeper, we talk with each other, we kick it out, we laugh, everything. It's a great time. So join us today after the service. And right now I'd like to bring up our fellow, my fellow elder, Carolyn, that has something to share with us. Thank you, Elder Mo. Good morning, Fordham Manor. How are you today? Uh, I announced last week an invitation for leaders for our new recovery program. Some of you may remember it as Hunger for Healing. We're starting a new uh, recovery ministry called Celebrate Recovery. I don't know if you have the video. You do. Excellent. You're going to watch the video, and I'll say a few more words. We often talk about celebrate recovery being 
for anybody who struggles with a hurt, hang up, or habit. So whether you're somebody who was hurt as a child and you're still dealing with those issues, or you've got people pleasing, hang ups, and things that keep you stuck in relationships, or you're addicted to something, food, sex, alcohol, whatever it is, the sober recovery is really for anybody. In fact, that's the truth. Sober recovery is for all of us because we've all been hurt, we've all hurt other people, we've all got things in our lives that keep us stuck and keep us frozen, things we wish we didn't deal with. And for many of us, we have these addiction issues that also just rob us of any joy or peace that we have in our life. The thing about sober recovery is that it's a biblical program and it's got eight principles that lead us from one place to the next place over one day at a time after one day at a time. So we begin where we realize that we're not God. We come out of denial. We face our fears. We face the problems that are keeping us stuck. We turn our lives over to Jesus. We do things like taking a moral inventory of our lives. And we look at all the things that we've done and been done to us to help us come out of that. We talk to other people about what's happening. Then at the end, we serve other people. Because we believe that God uses our pain so that we can help other people when they go through pain. And so what we really want to do is just tell you about this ministry, this place where you can come and you can find healing no matter what's going on in your life. We have some people that have gone through celebrate recovery for years that have dealt with issues like anxiety. And they wake up every morning in a cold sweat and they just look at their day and they think, how am I going to get through today? By working the principles and steps of recovery, they're able to find day by day freedom over that issue. We have other people who are severely depressed and they also need to find a way out. There's people like me who struggle with anxiety and, and a recovering alcoholic. And I know that when I'm hurting, I medicate. Now, I haven't medicated with alcohol for over a decade, but I can find anything, whether it's working out or whether it's, you know, spending money or anything. Just give it to me and I will overdo it. And so we find that we've got these issues. And what we need to do is we come clean about it. We talk to each other about it. We talk to God about it. We allow him to work in our lives and to find the thing that's really causing us pain. You know, the reality of it is, is that whatever we're doing tends to be a symptom. We think, I need to come to recovery because I drink too much, or I'm online too much, or I spend too much money. And while that's true, we need to get out that simple behavior. We need to root it out. The truth is, is that often the reason we're doing those things are buried deeper inside of us. And so that's what recovery allows us to do. It allows us to find that, that pain that's in our lives, that's keeping us frozen, keeping us stuck. Thank you for that. So if you are a human being on the planet, this is for you. <laughs> we all have habits, hang-ups, and hurts that we need to heal from. And uh, recovery programs are wonderful. The Lord uses them miraculously. The difference um, with Celebrate Recovery is the higher power is identified as Jesus. Jesus is the one who does the healing. And so we come together in community and we heal together. So this invitation is for leaders, people who the Lord has um, been talking to. Like you have leadership capability and you also can identify with this healing journey. This is an opportunity for you to become a part of the leadership team. It's a one year commitment. We're going to begin our training on May 25th here. It'll be online training all day, but we'll begin it here. And we want to be faithful to the Lord. We want to go through the entire process to make sure we are ready to lead from a place of wholeness. So if the Lord is speaking to you, please see me after service to sign up for the leadership training. The ministry will launch in the fall. Is that all right? Very important recovery. I'm one. I shared once that I'm in recovery. Somebody said, not you. I said, but this is the grace of God. Amen. Last but not least, there are three ways to give. In person, online, and texting to Bronx Church 73256. God bless you. Here is your announcement. Praise the Lord. The um, theme of healing is so important. How many know that we need healing today? Amen. And we're going to ask uh, my sister Ruth if she would come up. And, uh, and we want to pray for those of you who have a need today, specifically in the area of healing. Amen. Praise the Lord. This morning when we were praying, um, getting ready for service, uh, God put this 
word in my heart that healing is going to take place. And no matter what healing it is, and the song was so prophetic, no hurt, no no uh, sickness is great for his wounds to heal. So this morning I want to ask all of us to stand up. Please get up on your feet. And nobody's going to pray for you. I'm not going to pray for you. Elders and leaders are not going to pray for you because some of us also need healing. So we are going to touch our body where it hurts. We are going to touch ourselves, and we're just going to lay it down at his feet and allow him to be the surgeon over our body. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray for everybody, O oh Lord, Father, this morning who are in pain, O oh Lord, Father, God. Whatever pain, O oh Lord, Father, God, let it be head, eyes, ears, mouth, O oh Lord, Father, God, throat, Lord, skin, O oh Lord, Father, God, our hearts, our stomach, O oh Lord, Jesus, leg, joint pain, back pain, Father, God. In Jesus' name, I pray healing, O oh Lord, God. I plead your blood. I plead your Holy Spirit spirit god send your word and heal our people father god let your healing take place this morning oh lord jesus lord i pray for some relationship healing oh lord god some relationship healing healing between marriages healing between father son healing between mother daughter any relationship healing oh lord jesus father god i speak healing I speak healing. I speak healing. I claim your blood, O oh Lord, Father God. Lord, I pray for any mental sickness, O oh Lord Jesus. Depression, anxiety, loneliness, suicidal tendency, you name it. God, I declare your name over this sickness, O oh Lord Jesus, Father God. Lord, send your word, O oh Lord God. The scripture says, by your strength. By your stripes we are healed. Touch us, O Lord God, by your wounded hand, Father God. Let there be healing from head to toe. God, I see people getting healed right now. I see people getting healed right now. Healing in their heart. Healing in the cancer, Lord, Father God. Healing with the blood issue, Father God. In Jesus' name, I take the victory. We 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 take the victory in Jesus' name. We take the victory, O Lord God, over death in Jesus' name. We claim healing, O Lord God, on our forehead. We take healing, O Lord God, in our wombs, O Lord God. We take healing, O Lord Jesus God, on the bottom of our feet, O Lord Jesus. We take healing, O Lord God, on our spine. We take healing on our headache. Lord, we take healing on our joint pain, on our knees, O Lord God, on our elbows, O Lord God, on our bones, O Lord God, on our nerves, O Lord Jesus, on our muscles, O Lord Jesus, on our wombs, O Lord Jesus, on the ovaries, O Lord God, on our uteruses, O Lord Jesus. God, I pray for healing. Let your healing flow. Let your healing flow. Let your healing flow. In Jesus' name, I declare healing in the house of the Lord this morning. I declare healing over your families this morning. I declare healing over your children this morning. I declare healing on the women on this morning. I declare healing on the men of this house. I declare healing on the body of Christ. I declare healing and victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. How many received that today in the name of Jesus? By his stripes. We are healed. Amen. Somebody give God praise today. Somebody glorify him. Somebody give God thanks for healing. He is the God that heals you. He is your healer. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we thank you, O oh God. We receive the healing today, Lord. We come today with thanksgiving, Lord God. We thank you that you are our healer, that you have restored our sickness from sickness, Lord, and disease. We give you thanks today, Lord, for you are good. You look upon all of our needs, Lord. You care for us in our hearts, Lord God. You care for our bodies, Lord God. You care for us in, in, mentally and emotionally, Lord. You care for all of our needs, Lord Jesus. 
Today, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that everyone that you came into contact, you heal, Lord. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever, Lord God. You are able, Lord God, to do what man cannot do, Lord. So we give you thanks and praise, O oh God, for you are the God who heals us. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We thank you that you are the great physician, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you that you care for us. We give you thanks and praise today in the name of Jesus and all of God's people say, amen, amen. amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. We're going to take the offering right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks and praise, Lord God. For this opportunity, Lord, to sow into your kingdom, Lord. Father, we thank you that every, every dollar that we put in, Lord, is an opportunity, is a seed. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that it is you who makes the seed grow, Lord. So we ask that this seed would be for the multiplication of your kingdom, Lord. And we're asking that through the finances, Lord God, children would be saved. We're asking that teenagers would be transformed. We're asking, Lord, that this neighborhood would be reached. We're asking, Lord, that you would use us to minister wherever we would go, Lord God, through this offering, Lord God, and through the offerings to come. Lord, let it be for your glory. In the name of Jesus and all of God's people say, amen. We are a chosen generation. Called for to show his excellence. Oh, I require from life God has given me. I know just who I am. Chosen generation go forth to show his excellence. Come on, for I require from life God is giving me. I know this who I am. Help me out. We are the chosen generation go forth to show his excellence. Oh, I Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Spirit of praise here. Thank you, worship team. God bless you guys. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Tell your neighbor, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. God bless you. It's so good to be with all of you here today. Uh, it's good to be back. Thank you for uh, your prayers for, for me and my family. We, th we thank you for that. 
Um, for those of you who are joining us for the very first time, my name is uh, Joe, and I'm the senior pastor here at Florida Manor Church. To all our visitors, thank you for coming today. It was good meeting you, and uh, good greeting all of you. We ho- our hope is then that you come back and that you get planted, rooted, and grow and keep going in all that God has for you. Amen. Um, welcome to our virt- virtual church family as well, watching online. We're so glad that you could be here with us whatever time you are watching. Uh, welcome to Fordham Manor Church Sunday service. Amen. When he died in, in 1976, J. Paul Getty was one of the richest men in America. You may have heard of Getty gas stations. Anybody heard of Getty gas stations? That's the Getty we're talking about. As you imagine, Getty made his money in the oil business. And when he passed away, his net worth was valued around $26 billion in today's dollars. J. Paul Getty was really, really rich. Now, what would you do if you had that kind of money? How would your lifestyle change? What would you do if you had $26 billion? For starters, most of us would immediately relocate, preferably somebody somewhere warmer. Amen, somebody. The next thing we might do is alert our jobs that we were taking an early retirement. How many would start there? All right. Not J. Paul Getty. J. Paul Getty lived like he was poorer than most. He kept his home thermostat at 60 degrees even for guests, and he furnished it with broken down furniture from the Salvation Army. Despite having all the money in the world, Getty wore hand-me-down clothes with holes in them, and he drove a dented car. How cheap was J. Paul Getty? Ask your neighbor how cheap was he. He made his staff and his guests use pay phones when they visited Mr. Getty was so cheap, he would stand in line for hours trying to snag discounted tickets to save money when he could have bought the entire theater. That's crazy. The problem is that many Christians are living like J. Paul Getty. Many live spiritually poor lives while sitting on a pile of spiritual riches. We live spiritually broke like the world when we are, in fact, rich in Christ Jesus. Today, we are, we are looking at the Apostle Paul's prayer in the Ephesians uh, in chapter 1. And the Apostle Paul's prayer for us is that we understand all that we have in Christ and live like that. God doesn't want his children living in spiritual poverty. He wants us to, to experience an abundant life and live above our circumstances and experience deliverance from addictions and depression and from other things. Amen? How many are ready to live that kind of life? If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1? And we're looking at verses 15 to 23. Let's pray as we approach God's word. Father, we thank you for your word. Pray that you would speak like only you can. Holy Spirit, help us to see what you want us to see. Let us hear what you want us to hear and understand. Help us to listen and obey. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. I pray this all in the mighty matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all of God's people say, Amen. amen and amen. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope 
to which he has called you. The riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. And his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Jesus from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet, and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. We are continuing our sermon series on the book of Ephesians. Uh, for the next two months, we'll be we're going through this book, which the Apostle Paul wrote to, the, to a church in Ephesus, uh, located in a country that we now know as Turkey. Have you ever felt like you belong to something bigger than yourself? The book of Ephesians explores this very idea, and the Apostle uh, dives into God's plans for everyone that is united in Christ. Ephesians uh, unpacks themes of grace, our place in the church, and living a life worthy of God's calling. The title and theme of today's message is The Rich Christian Life. And in the first half of chapter one of the Ephesians, which uh, Pastor Olga preached on last week, the Apostle Paul describes everything that Christians have. He blesses God for having chosen us in Christ already and given us so much. Tell your neighbor, you're rich. In the second half of chapter one, the apostle prays for the church at Ephesus and for us. And he prays for things so that we can experience the wealth, the blessings, and the riches of God's grace. Right here, right now, he prays that we will experience the rich Christian life. Write down number one if you're with me today. Uh, he prays that first, that in order to experience the rich Christian life, that we will get to know God better. Verse 17 says this, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I mentioned on Resurrection Sunday that Christianity is about having a relationship with God. God wants you to get to know him better. And the only way to get to know any person better is by having a regular conversation with them. Communication is key. Amen? No person in this world knows me better than my wife. She knows the good, the bad, and the ugly of this man in front of you. Amen? And believe me, there's a lot of ugly my wife has put, had to put up with. Amen? I thank God for her patience with me. How many married people can thank God for a patient spouse today? Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. And tell the truth, shame the devil. Amen. My wife knows me well because we have built a relationship over 23 years of marriage. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's a good thing. We got to know each other through many, many conversations, and she learned about my character through many different situations. Um, I have learned about her, and she has gotten to know me better. Now, we could have drifted apart if we had not regularly communicated. How many know that you can live in the same house but grow further and further apart? Relationships take time to build, and they are built through ongoing dialogue. 
And friends, I want to tell you today that God wants you to have a deeper relationship with him, which means having a prayer conversation beyond coming to church on Sunday. Now, please come to church on Sunday. Start by worshiping God and put him first, but don't stop there. If you're with me today, say amen. Amen. God, the creator of everything seen and unseen, wants to meet with you every morning. He wants to speak to you during your day at work, in the office, at the construction site. He wants to speak to you at home with your kids, help you with your studies in college, and meet with you as you close out your day. So how do we get close to God? Beyond praying in the mornings, stop and take prayer breaks during the day as you work. In the book of Nehemiah, we read that Nehemiah was asked by the king what he needed for the project. And before Nehemiah responded, it says in the word that he took time to pray. Friends, involve God in your work day. Better yet, make him your boss. Do your work as if God is in charge and watch how he changes your attitude towards everything around you, towards your irritating coworkers. Come on, somebody. Amen. Watch how God gives you grace with your evil boss. Amen, somebody. You don't want to say it too loud because you're afraid that boss might hear, right? And annoying customers. Teachers, ask the Lord for patience and insight in your classroom as you teach the kids with their shorter and shorter attention spans. Ask God to move in the lives of the difficult students. Believe that he is able. Amen? The Apostle Paul's prayer is that we will get to know God better by talking with him all throughout the day. In fact, at one point, the Apostle Paul says, pray about everything and be praying without ceasing. Pray continuously. How do we do that? We do that by lifting up our thought to the Lord as we're going throughout the day. Say, God, what do you want me to do now? God, I'm worried about this. I'm just going to present this to you right now. Amen? How many know that prayer, that worry is an alarm for prayer? Some of us, are just, just, we just keep giving in to prayer. But you know what? When you worry, that should be your alarm and say, you know what? I'm going to pray about this right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask God about this, and I'm going to believe that he's going to give me his peace that passes understanding as I continue to pray about that. Tell your neighbor, pray about everything. So we need to get to know God better. There is no better way to get to know God than by reading his word, the Bible. Amen? By show of hands, and I'm not trying to show up anybody, but how many started a Bible reading plan this year? Anybody started a Bible reading plan? If you started and stopped, it's time to return back to that plan. If you haven't started, that's okay. It's, it's time to start reading God's word on a daily basis. God reveals himself by the Holy Spirit through his word. God speaks through his word. He reveals himself and his character, and he also gives us direction. The number one prayer or request I get from people is I need direction. And I want to tell you what Psalm 109 says this, 105. It says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God promises direction through his word. Amen? Amen. If you're new to to reading the Bible and you're like, I don't know where to start, I want to invite you to take the uh, baptism class that is taking place on the April 28th. Even if you have been baptized, this is a discipleship class, and this will give you insight into how to study God's word step by step. So sign up in the back afterwards. God wants to speak to you through his word. Amen? Amen. Tell your neighbor, get to know God better. If you're tracking with me, write down point number two. To experience the rich Christian life now, we need to understand our calling. Verse 18 says this, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which you have been called. Tell your neighbor you're called. There's a general calling for all believers here. Every one of us have been called by God 
to the following purposes. You have, we have been called, number one, to belong in Christ. That means we identify with Jesus. Jesus' death becomes my death, as represented in baptism and when I went under the water. And Jesus' resurrection becomes my resurrection when I came out of the waters and was born again. Amen? Jesus' righteousness became my righteousness. I don't know about you, but I think that's a good place to give God a clap offering. Amen? Somebody praise him today. If the old you died with Jesus on the cross, praise him today. If you've been born again of his spirit and washed of his blood. Amen? As the song goes, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen? The Apostle Paul said this in Galatians 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen? The Bible tells us that we are called to be saints. Another word for saints is holy ones. I don't know about you, but I don't always feel holy. Amen? But that's not, that's not what it's saying. It's not saying you feel, you, you, you know, it's what you feel. It says you'll be called to be holy ones. And how many know that what God says about us is the truth? Are there any holy ones in the house today? Any saints today? I, you didn't convince me. Any holy ones in the house today? It's not because I feel that way. It's because God called me to be a holy one. Tell your neighbor, you're a holy one. All of us are called to be free, to be free. God intended you to be free. That's your calling. You are called to be free in the name of Jesus. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen? Have you guys ever watched an infomercial, maybe late at night? They will show you a product like a knife that cuts a penny. You're like, I didn't know I need that, but somehow they draw you in, right? And when you get bored with a demonstration, you're about to change that channel. The information will, the infomercial will tell you, but wait, there's more. Tell your neighbor, there's more. God called you to be part of the body of Christ, the church. When you were born again, you were born into a church family. You need us. We need you. I know, I know. You're not crazy about the church family because it's not perfect. I get it, but we, don't, we, we can't walk the Christian walk alone. God chooses imperfect people like you and like me to sharpen one another so that we can mature together. Amen? There are no solo Christians. We need each other. Tell your neighbor, you need me, and I, and you need, and I need you. Amen? On top of all of this, on top of all this that we're called to, we are called to suffer. Did he just say suffer? Yes, I did. First Peter 2.21 says this, For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow in his steps. Oh, I know you don't want to hear this today. Neither do I, but I got to keep it real for all of us. Amen. The Apostle Paul said this in Acts chapter 14, verse 22. He said, we must suffer many things to enter into the kingdom of God. We were called to suffer, but suffering does not have the final word. We read in, in Romans 8, 28, that God works all things. Somebody say all things. Together for good, for those who love God and are called according to his holy purposes. He is working out your suffering for good. Amen? God takes what the devil meant for evil, and he makes it for good. Amen? How many believe that today? Somebody give God a clap offering today. Amen? He's taking what well, you're that suffering, and he's refining you. Job says, I'm going to come out like gold when I come out of that fire in the name of Jesus. Amen? Anybody being refined today? Anybody being restored to a view, a glory that God has called you to? Amen? Tell your neighbor, you are called. 
I want you to write down point number three. To experience the rich Christian life, we need a heavenly vision. Heaven is going to be good. I can't wait for that great reunion when I get to see those who have gone before me who I miss so dearly. I can't wait to meet the great leaders in the Bible like David and Moses and Peter and Ruth and Esther and Mary. I can't wait. I can't wait for that day when evil and pain and suffering are done. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to that day. More than that, I can't wait till I see Jesus face to face. Amen. How many know that's going to be an awesome day? Hallelujah. How good is heaven going to be? Imagine your best day here. Imagine your best day here. Everybody got a day in mind? Think of that special day when you achieve the goal after working for 5, 10, 15, 25 years. Remember that day when you got a, a diploma or a prize, an award in front of colleagues, friends, and family. Think of that amazing day where you were proud of a child or sibling. Maybe they were born. Think of that perfect day when you were on vacation. And it was a perfect temperature. Surrounded by friends and doing the things that you love. Think of your best day ever so far. Everybody got it? Every day in heaven will be better than your best day here. Isn't that awesome to think about? In 1 Peter 1, 4, the Apostle Peter says this about heaven. God has something stored up for you in heaven where it will never decay or be ruined or disappear. Oh, when I think of heaven, I think of that song I can only imagine. The song says, surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance before you, Jesus, and all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah, or will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine, amen? Hallelujah. That's it. We can only imagine. The Apostle Paul describes this in 1 Corinthians 2.9. He says this, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Tell your neighbor, heaven is going to be good. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. If you believe that heaven is going to be mind-blowing, beautiful, and good, let's start living like it's real. We need a heavenly vision for our life. When we have a heavenly vision, we will stop living for temporary things that have no value in eternity. When we have a heavenly vision, we will store up treasures that will last instead of stuff that's going to disappear. When we have a heavenly vision, we will serve and give others instead of looking to get. Friends, it's time to put on some new glasses. Time to put on some new glasses. Glasses with a vision towards eternity. This life is just a dress rehearsal for the real thing. I want to get it right. I don't know about you. But I want to have a vision for eternity rather than for just here. If you're with me today, say amen. amen. You are rich. God has prepared a place for you and me. It's time to start living like heaven is real. We don't have a full picture of what heaven is going to look like, but we do know that we can live for heaven now. Amen. Tell your neighbor, live like heaven is real. I want you to write down point number four. To experience the rich Christian life, we need to experience God's power in our lives. God's power in our lives. I'm going to invite the worship ministers to come up and join me. The Apostle Paul wrote this in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. 
And he just keeps continues going on and talking about God's power. It's awesome. You got to read the whole thing. But he says, this is verse 19. I want you to know God's incomparably great power for those who believe. How many know that God is all powerful? Anybody know that's God? That's awesome. That is awesome. It's one thing, though, to know in your head that God is awesome and all powerful. It's a whole nother thing to experience God's power in your life. The Apostle Paul wants you to understand that the Holy Spirit is living in you, and the Holy Spirit is God Almighty Himself. God's power is available to you and to me. Ask your neighbor what kind is available, what kind of power is available. I'm glad you asked. The power directed towards our good is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. The same power that seated him at God's head, right hand side. The same power that gave Jesus authority over everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you experienced the supernatural power in your life? God's almighty supernatural power is available to you and to I. Jesus has the power and he's given us the authority to bind, to loosen, to bless, to forbid. The keys of the kingdom has been given to you to open and to close doors. Amen. How many know today that God supplies the power? But he gives us the authority to use that power here and now. Jesus told us this in Luke 10, 19. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. Somebody say all. all. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. Tell your neighbor, you have authority in Jesus' name. Since we have the authority, it's time to stop being passive when the devil raises his ugly head. Friends, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen? Stop living in the fear of the enemy and start being dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. Anybody dangerous to the kingdom of darkness here? Amen? Listen to what Jesus said this about the church. He said that upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Gates are defensive. We are called to be gate crashers against the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Friends, it's time to go in the authority of your king. So how do we use the authority that he's given us? Our homes and our businesses are wired to connect with the main power source, Con Edison. Con Edison generates the electrical current. But our electronics would be useless without charging or plugging into that outlet. To turn on the lights, or connect to the outside world, we need to connect to the power source. Friends, if you're not seeing power in your life at this moment, if you're leaving a defeated Christian life, if you are struggling in bondage instead of freedom, if you are living for this world, then you are not plugged into the power source. God today is inviting you to connect with him Jesus said come to him and he will give you life and life more abundantly today is a day to receive power from on high as promised by the Holy Spirit just like your phone you can't live on one charge you are invited to plug in daily receive the power all day that you need to go in his authority. Tell your neighbor, go in authority. 
J. Paul Getty was rich beyond anything we could comprehend. But he left it all behind. It's time for us to get out of poverty. We are rich in Christ, but we need to live like it. We are children of the Most High. It's time to get, get to know God better. The more we know Him, the more we content will we will be. It's time to stop being satisfied with this fading world. We have a home far more beautiful than this. It's time to tap into God's power and use the authority that Jesus has given us and stop living passive like we have been. Would you bow your heads with me at this time? Hallelujah. With every head bowed, I want to pray for every believer that the Holy Spirit is moving to be more prayerful. You, God is calling you. I, I want to get to know you more. But I need to hear from you. I need to hear from you more than just in the mornings. I want to hear from you throughout the day. If God is moving in your heart because you haven't made enough time for him, would you just indicate it by raising your hand? You feel like God nud nudging you say, I want to spend more time with you. Maybe the Lord is speaking to you about your calling in Christ. You're not living in like up to that calling because you're living like the world. If, that's, if God is calling you, would you just indicate it by raising your hand? Perhaps God is calling you to stop living for the riches that will fade away. It's time to seek God's kingdom. It's time to live like heaven is a real place. Time to put on some new glasses. If God is calling you, just raise your hand and say, yes, Lord, I hear you speaking. And finally, I want to pray for every Christian who has been too passive in the spiritual fight. Jesus has given you the keys of the kingdom. It's time to use your keys. Start fighting for your, in the spirit for your children. Start fighting in the spirit against the strongholds in your life. Shut the door on the devil in the name of Jesus and keep shutting it on him. If God is speaking to you, raise your hand today. Amen. Let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, forgive us for our lack of prayer. We want to know you more. You're calling us into your presence. Deep is calling into deep. Help us, Lord, to be more prayerful. Help us to live up to the calling that you have for us. Give us a heavenly vision to see heaven as our real home, oh God. Forgive us for living for this world. And Jesus, we thank you for the supernatural resurrection power that is living within us. You have given us authority to bind and to loosen, to open and close doors, and to say to mountains, be thou removed, and they will be tossed into the sea. We believe you and your word. We believe that the gates of hell shall not prevail against your church. Help us to be strong in you and in your mighty power together. We say amen and amen. Can we give God praise? Hallelujah. Would you stand with me as we sing a chorus?
Hallelujah. I'm going to ask an usher to come up front. Can I get one usher to come up front, please? And um, as we close, if you are coming down to lunch with the pastors, they'll escort you down to where that's going to take place. And I'm going to ask Margie if she would close this out. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 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 I am a miracle child. I am a miracle child. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord Almighty. Oh, thank you, Father. What a beautiful reminder you're giving us today. I thank you for upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell <laughs> cannot prevail against it. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. For I am convinced. <laughs> Not high. Not low. Not east. Not west. <laughs> Nothing will separate me from the love of God, my Savior. So Heavenly Father, I send your children, your miracle children, in peace. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Go in peace.